What's up, Commonwealth? Jimmy Martin here, and welcome back to another awesome episode of Bluegrass Soccer Cast. Of course, you're home for all things soccer right here in our beautiful state of Kentucky. I'm, of course, your host, Jimmy Martin, and today we have a lot of things to talk about. Uh, we have been gone for over a month at this point. Um, it seems like we've been gone for forever, but we have a very special episode for you today where we're going to have a whole bunch of news, updates, and different things. Um, to share with you all. But as always, we're going to start every episode like we have done before by going off the top. And for this week, for going off the top, I want to talk about a whole lot of our of the news that we've got going on. The first big uh, point of news is we found a co-host. We have searched the Commonwealth from Pikeville to uh, Paducah, and everywhere in between, we have looked in Fulton, we've looked in Lexington, we've looked in Louisville, and we have found the perfect co-host for this show. And let's bring him on now. Everyone welcome Mr. John Hunt. John, how are we doing, sir? I'm good. How are you, Jimmy? I'm good. I'm good, my friend. John, thank you so much for uh, joining us on um, our podcast. Um uh, I want the people to kind of get to know you a little bit more, though. Uh, so kind of talk to me about where are you from? Uh, so I am originally from Detroit. Detroit? I, Rock City? Uh, technically speaking, if you want to say I'm from Warren, Michigan, which is literally the city just north of Detroit, um, like eight mile is the border between us. So I'm from the town Eminem's actually from. <laughs> um, I love the Eminem. Yeah, um, I now reside in Rockcastle County. After stu I studied four years at Berea College as, as a history major, and now I'm studying to get my master's in teaching at the University of Cumberland online, and I work in Lexington. That's legit. Also, in full transparency to the audience, uh, John and I do not know each other, like at all. We haven't even met in person yet. This is what the... Second, third time we've ever even been on a, an episode together? This is the second time outside of the uh, the screening we did. That's right. That's right. So, John, talk to me about, you know, did you play soccer growing up, or what does soccer mean to you, really? So, I grew up, I very much grew up in a sports family. So, like, if y'all um, find me on Twitter, which is at J underscore hunt 1123, um, my, I grew up in a baseball family, baseball, football family. Um, I got into soccer myself, like completely by myself with the, tw mainly with the 2014 world cup that really got me into it and stuff and YouTube and all that stuff. Um, I did not play soccer ever. The most I've played is pickup type random games, um, and some, intramural college here you go see i've i've not like in the sense of an organized team ever played in the set and also there i play keeper when i do that i'm not nice. that skilled with my feet <laughs> either um so, but what got me into soccer really was the it's the fan culture per se uh just because i was like this is dope this is cool seeing all these videos and stuff and because of my history background, I've always dug into stuff real deep. So it's like learning all this stuff. I'm like, that's cool. It's more because I've always been like the fan that likes to cheer and stuff. And like in baseball, that's not really something you do. You just kind of sit there and watch. And if something good happens, you cheer, but you really just sit there. It's not this thing of like, no, we're going to be drumming the entire you imagine though like drumming out in the outfield for like a home run and stuff like that for baseball uh the cleveland guardians when they were the indians did that you famously see that in the movie major league with the tp oh yeah come yeah. on with that movie for him yeah they used to do that and in japan they actually do do it like so when like the jake league launched in japan it was not like oh, this is some foreign thing to do fan chants. Like, it was a, a normal thing to do in Japan. Mm. Mm -hmm. that, that's really interesting, especially because, like, you know, if you look at, like, softball culture in America, that has a little bit of that chanting and cheering aspect of uh, what you see typically in soccer. But, um, John, let's talk about who your, your favorite teams are, just so everybody knows. So, 
in terms of America, my MLS teams kind of bounce between Cincinnati just because I live. It's the closest team to me. Right. And the Timbers, because the Timbers were the team I like picked when I, in 2014, because I didn't have really anything else. The fire at, at, at that time and still now suck. So yeah, that's my first I, MLS team. Yeah. I can't root for Chicago. I can't root no. for any team from Ohio. So Cincinnati <laughs> is not technically Ohio. Right. Um, it is Kentucky. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> on the border. So it's not really the airport is in Kentucky, which is just airports in Kentucky. Most, most of the population lives in Kentucky of the working population. Um, but so America Timbers or Cincinnati, I'm not that huge of an MLS fan. Like I'm not diehard. I'll, I want the league to do good as an American, but I'm not a diehard MLS fan. So you have the MLS Apple TV plus subscription plus package plus your left kidney. No, I do all the free games and the free there content off that because while I agree it's arguably the best all encompassing streaming service that there is right now, I'm still not paying a hundred dollars for that. No, because it's monthly and then you have to pay the hundred dollars. I just I don't know. They gotta work that out somehow. It's just like um, it it should be like the other subscription services where you have, if you buy into the subscription, you get the package. Granted, it's still the best because there's no blackouts. Yes, mm-hmm. they've had some broadcasting issues, but there's no blackouts. You can watch it wherever you want. It's all in one area. Mm-hmm. Whereas with like Peacock for the Premier League, they still have the games on USA that aren't on mm-hmm. Peacock, so it's kind of hard. Anyways, I'm... Um, I have ADHD, so I will get very sidetracked. Just fair <laughs> warning, listeners. Um, my other two U.S. teams are Detroit City FC. I do. I am a fan of Louisville. I know they're rivals in a sense. <laughs> um, I'm from Detroit. I've taken part in the Northern Guard, but I'm not like I won't root for Louisville at any point. I'm. I live in Kentucky. Louisville's the USL championship team in Kentucky, so I want them to succeed. It might just be hard if I'm covering them together, but yeah. outside of that, I want them to succeed. And then my my main team now is Lexington SC. I am a very big part of the Railbirds, uh, which is the supporters group. I run their socials and all that type of stuff. Um, I'm what many, you could label me a super fan. I don't like using <laughs> that term, but you could label well, me you're a leader of the, the, of the railbirds. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a visible leader to the point that one of the owners knows my name. <laughs> one of the owners knows my name and coach Stockley like knows me from like my back, like not my face. Like he can spot me from my back. Granted, I didn't, that's awesome. I typically wear the same stuff at games. Um, <laughs> In terms of European, um, England is the our, our easiest league to follow in America, in my opinion. But I am a big Serie A fan. That's like my number one league, and that's partially because I I spent two weeks in Italy on a study abroad, so I have like a connection a, a bit with that that country. I feel so. My favorite team in Italy is Roma. That was picked before I even went to Italy. That was because of Toti. And now Dybala, who I like, I liked a lot. Um, well, Fran, how do you feel about uh, uh, was Captain America, Christian Pulisic, going and playing for uh, Milan, AC Milan? Um, as an American, I love it because I feel like he was he's going to hopefully be a starter there. Type thing. It's going to be hard to root for him. Out. It's going to be hard to root for him, but it's the same thing where I can root for him in any game besides Roma. And even then it's like Roma win two, one Pulisic scores the one goal for Milan. I'll, I'll take that, you know, type <laughs> thing. Like they still lose, but Pulisic does good. Right. In a sense, like, um, France, I don't really follow closely, but I support Monaco as Monaco just because, um, I picked a team. Honestly, I just looked at, I looked at a team. I was like, I don't want to support PSG. And I looked at what the other ones were. And I was like, oh, Monaco. I couldn't really name anybody other than PSG. So good on you. 
There, there's PSG, there's Leon. Rante, Leon's, Reams has that coach they were getting fined for because he like didn't have a license and he learned every single football manager. <laughs> he, he, and I, I've never played football manager, but I watch people like Zeeland on YouTube that do it. And it's legit. It's not like, granted, this guy played soccer and he's coached before, but he's like saying it made him a better coach hmm. by, but tech tactical wise using football manager so it's not like you can learn to be a coach that way but you might be able to enhance your tactics which i'm going to put this forward i am not a tactics guy if you're looking for a deep tactical understanding of the game i'm not that i can look at chemistry i can kind of understand that sort of stuff i am more when it comes to sports on the business side of stuff i'm not a tactical guy and like NFL, well, the quarterback should be throwing this. So I can't do that, but I can do like understand business and that sort of like how a club or a team should be ran in the proper ways of that. Um, well, that was the whole reason we picked you, John. So uh, thank you, everybody. Way by done. No, I'm just joking. Just joking. Um, in Spain, I like Barcelona. I wouldn't say they're my favorite because I don't personally like supporting a big club because i feel it's just they've been picked by so many that mm-hmm. it, i don't want to be called a glory hunter <laughs> just uh, trophy. yeah i liked barcelona they have players i like and so it's i don't like real madrid but that's mainly because of the super league stuff oh yeah even though barcelona was Great. involved in that it was mainly the i don't know his name but the president of real was like the big pusher of it um, so in Spain, I like either Real Betis or, um, Athletic Bilbao, uh, just, they're the kind of scrappy underdogs. I like Athletic Bilbao because they do the Basque only transfer policy. I like clubs that stick to an identity type thing. Um, Germany, uh, it's, this like just got solidified recently. Like I liked watching Bundesliga, but I couldn't really pick a team. Uh, I like FC Union Berlin, one FC Union Berlin, if I wanted to do the technical full, full name. And then in England, I support like three different teams. I, my Jesus. Well, first team was Manchester United because I like David De Gea. And in 2014, really, you could only pick a big six club to follow right. if you were a fan of England. And... I thought Spurs the uniforms looked boring. This is a 14-year-old mindset of this. Ars- <laughs> Arsenal, I thought the name was stupid. I genuinely remember I was like, Arsenal, that looks, and they're called the Gooners. That just sounds stupid. Don't tell Coach Stockley that. He'll come after you. He's That's a Liverpool team. fan. He's a Liverpool. Liverpool. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're right. Liverpool, I almost picked, but I just... I, I I think it was Manchester United because of De Gea. Like, I like De Gea, and I think I just knew it more. I was like, oh, this is a team I know more type thing, and stuck by them. But my the team I really support is Forest, Nottingham Forest, hmm. or Sunderland. Is it because of the show? Oh, no! <laughs> Sorry, I pushed on my, like, tray. Technical difficulties. We're back. Here we go. Uh, so is it Sunderland because of the show? Uh, yeah, Sunderland was Sunderland until I died. And I was like, England's like the only country where you can follow teams in lower leagues in America, like easily. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I can follow. The- Sunderland was in League One. I was like, I can follow them. Forest was because of a Copa 90 story on YouTube. Um, which that's how I've, I've found many of my teams is through Copa 90 stories or the teams I kind of like root for because that's how I connect to the club culturally, that type of stuff. And then, um, and then Manchester United, because honestly in England, you had to support a big six team in America. Yep. Because go right up there, it's kind of a thing. It's the only way you can like what actually have rooting interests in European soccer. Absolutely. In some, some fashion. And then I, I'm a fan of Celtic. 
I would say if I had a family club, it would be Celtic because I, fa- I have family from Ireland in the Glasgow area. And cool. they one of, I have like a great, great uncle from Ireland. I met like one time and he's a Celtic fan. So I would say if I had to connect a family club, Celtic would be my family club. Absolutely. Well, now that you've uh, ticked off probably half of our audience with all of those clubs, because uh, they're going to be fans of somebody else who's around with somebody else, uh, make sure you let John know. <laughs> I, I'm not a diehard for any team but Lex. I will say that Lex first and foremost, I am not a diehard in the sense of like, I will fight to the little twit. I am a I I pick a team because I genuinely can't just watch a game. I can't just go, I need some sort of rooting interest in it. So I've picked teams of like, let's try to follow a bit of a rooting interest type thing to watch games. I can't just like watch. I can't just put on Brighton versus West Ham. I'd be like, okay. Come I can't. It would be a really good matchup. It'd be a good matchup. If it's like, I can watch finals, I can watch relegation battles, promotion, like those tight type things. But if it's like mid January, it's, Hoffenheim versus Mauricio Dortmund, they're like fourth and fifth, and they're separated by like a point. And like, eh, because I'm like, it could mean something, it could mean nothing. And but you, and you never know. Yeah. Well, you you would know if you paid that much attention and you were really involved in it. And I'll watch highlights. Casually flick it through. If something gets big and I see the news, I'll watch the highlights. And I'll keep up with it, but I'm not gonna like sit and watch. So like playing my weekend around a game I don't have a rooting interest in fully. Well, welcome, John. I'm really glad you're you're here. I'm really looking forward to having these conversations with you because, you know, sometimes it gets lonely just talking to yourself into a microphone. <laughs> but adding John is not the only thing that we have changed here on Bluegrass Soccer Cast. Uh, we are moving away from a pre-recorded uh, style podcast. This will actually be the last one that we do pre-recorded. I mean, obviously, you know, things may come up, but um, we are moving to a live show twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays every week. Uh, so we will do um, our Monday show will be a little bit more of kind of a recap of the weekend's action, kind of talk about, hey, Lou City dropped another one or, hey, Lexington got bounced again um, or, you know, Hey, racing Louisville just won the championship. Let's go. Um, so we'll do kind of more of that on our Monday shows. And then our Wednesday shows will typically either dive into a deeper topic or we'll talk a little bit more about um, upcoming matches or both, you know, depending on the week. Um, so make sure you stick to our Twitter page at BG soccer cast and our YouTube page at BG soccer cast. Um, for Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern um, for our first live show. Um, now, you might be wondering, you didn't talk about interviews while you were talking there, Jim. What's going on? Um, so we have separated the interview portions out of the podcast um, of this kind of a live show podcast because we didn't feel like it fit. You know, those are, are good efforts that we do. You know, I really appreciate uh, what goes into making those happen, but you know, sometimes you, it didn't flow right. You know, we had to, we tried to match the, the interview with some of the topics we were talking about and, you know, just kind of got to be a little, uh, convoluted at times. So we wanted to pull that out, give those interviews their own date and their own time. So we will start dropping our interviews, um, starting next Tuesday. Um, and they'll come out every Tuesday um, so you're going to get BG soccer cast Monday live show Tuesday podcast style interview. And then on Wednesday, you'll get, uh, your second live show. So again, make sure that you're on Twitter, uh, for our Twitter live broadcast or our YouTube broadcast. Um, uh, both of those handle BG soccer cast, uh, all one word. Um, and make sure, especially on YouTube, that you turn on your notifications so that you can get that ding when we do go live. Uh, make sure that you, uh, there's a thing in Twitter that you can do. I can't remember what it's called, favorite or something like that, where you get notified every time uh, we tweet. Um, but with that, 
out of the way, we do have even more um, news. It's a bell. Yes, make sure you click the bell. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, we also now have a way for you to donate to the show. Uh, we have a Buy Me Coffee account, so if you really enjoy our content here and you want to continue to support us, you can buy us coffee. Uh, so if you go, you scan the QR code there, or um, you go to our website, there's a link on there. Um, you know, Go to our Twitter page anywhere, click on our, uh, our, our link, and it'll take you to that page. Um, we appreciate all the support. Um, you know, we're trying to, to really grow this platform and really make it something, um, and get to, to do some really cool stuff. We've got some plans in the works for the spring already. And it feels really weird to say that on July 10th, when we're recording this, that we're thinking about spring already, but, um, every dollar that's donated will really go to help the show grow and, and be more, um, other news from from the podcast. We're now on Threads. Um, so, John, you got on Threads, right? I so you sent that in our Discord, and I clicked it. I was like, <laughs> "What is this?" I downloaded it, and literally, while I was last signed into the Railbird Instagram, and it just launched that. I was like, "No, yeah. I didn't mean to do that." And then I got on Threads. I made a singular post on Threads. I'm not posting ever again. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> the singular post was like first Snapchat, first steal from Snapchat was stories, and then from TikTok was reels, and now Twitter. Yeah, types. No, goes. we'll see how how Threads goes. We're uh, we're gonna play around on there. We don't have all the same tools that like Twitter has and stuff like that yet, but uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, if it works out and our community continues to grow over there, hey, we'll uh, we'll might post some. Uh, some content over there that's independent from other platforms. But as always, it's the same thread as, as everything else at BG Soccer Cast uh, on threads. Uh, we also weekly, we're posting a whole bunch of different articles. We've got different things covering um, Lexington. We've got things covering Louisville, uh, Lou City, Racing Louisville, um, the uh, game recaps from BGFC game recaps from Lexington Sporting Club and everything in between. So make sure that you're on uh, our website frequently so that you can get uh, up to date with all of uh, the latest news and stuff like that um, that comes with um, our, our awesome platform that we're working on building here. Uh, and then the last kind of bit of news that I want to talk about is just making sure that you're following us on everything, right? So we've got Twitter, TikTok, Threads, Instagram, YouTube, and all of that is at BG SoccerCast. And I don't think I forgot any, but if I did, I'll come back in just a minute and let you know. But with that out of the way, John, let's go on and move to the bottom line. So this week, John, we've missed a lot of matches over the last month or so. So I kind of just want to talk in kind of broad strokes, updating everyone where our teams are at. So, you know, Jonathan, we'll start with Lou City here. They're two, two, and three. So that's two wins, two losses, and three draws. Or do I have that backwards? Um, yeah, no, I do have that backwards. Two wins, two draws, three losses uh, in the last seven matches. Um, you know, we'll kind of take them into two different chunks here. So we'll go to the international game. So Lou City. 0-0 draw at Hartford. Would have liked to have seen Louisville have been able to score in that one, but it kind of seems to be a theme of Louisville City not having the steam that they need to to get up to it. John, thoughts on any of uh, anything from that Hartford match? Um, Louisville City is, and this is kind of applies to the whole thing. It for me, it's I mean, it's really hard for me to comment on a game that was seven games ago without hindsight. Yeah. Um, I understand we haven't this have been recorded for a while. Um and so in general on this run, I'm just gonna kinda talk about the run in general, is their goalkeeping is keeping Blue City in games, which is a blessing and a curse, in my opinion, because your goalkeeping can make you think you're in games when you're truly technically not. Yep. Like if you're not attacking and you're not getting shots on goal, it doesn't matter if the line is zero zero like nil nil like the Blue City Harper game. 
your keeper kept you in that game and kept you alive in that game and your attack did not help him out at all. Yeah, and just kind of looking through the list of games, like that one and then one other, in my opinion, should have been wins by Lucidity. Like they just have more talent. I think they have a better coach than some of the other teams. So, you know, that was one that really kind of stunned me. Uh, their next match was a one to three loss to Memphis. Uh, Memphis is playing pretty good right now. So, you know, nothing too much to kind of take away from that one. Um, you know, that was at home and you hate to see Lou City lose at home like that, but just kind of indicative of what's been happening this season for them. We then moved out to Phoenix for Lou City uh, at the Phoenix Rising 2 2 draw. Um, Seems about right for Phoenix um, and Louisville. You know, they're they're both pretty even at where they're at so far this season as far as talent and skill and uh, results on the pitch so far. But 2-2 uh, draw seems about right. They had, uh, I believe they had to come back and get that equalizer relatively late. So, um, you know, good to see that they were able to go deep on the road and still get a, a positive result. But then that takes us to the international friendly. Lou City's first international friendly. This one was at home uh, against FC. I'm not even going to try that. Kaiser Slotten. I'll tr- yeah, that's going to be my butchery. Um, and Lou City fell in that one, two to one uh, to FCK. Uh, you know, John, looking at the uh, the it being an international match, kind of what were your expectations going into that for them? And what did you think of the result? I can't. It's so hard, in my opinion, to judge non-top flight divisions across the country. Like, people say that, to like, the EP, EFL championship is, like, better than, like, MLS and that type of stuff. And I'm just like, I can see it, but it, they're not top flight. And to me... That, that there's something there with not being top flight. And so they were, this is F, FC Kaiser Sultan. I'm going to just call them FCK. FCK is a, uh, they were both just like a two side, right? Mm-hmm. So like, I genuinely do not have a great judgment of the second division, like, or off the top of my head, that type of thing. I know they're not, they didn't get promoted and they didn't get relegated, so they're likely in the middle of that thing. So I don't, but I think I'm. It's in the middle of the summer, so I'm not sure if they brought their A team type thing. I don't dive too much into this. In my, I think in, they brought a a pretty good team. You know, I would say probably like a B plus if I had to guess. Uh, maybe just a solid B team. Um, but I think you're right onto that there, John. Like they're just getting started, right? Like they're not in mid-season form like Lou City is or should be at least. So, you know, kind of from that perspective, maybe it's a little bit of a disappointment to lose that game, um, even though it was you know just a, a friendly. And I think it you can be disappointed in the sense of friendly and you lost it because of those things. But I also think there needs to be the realization as the fact of the USL Championship is, yes, a very competitive league. League One is very competitive, and MLS are all competitive. They're still very young, and there's still a lot of building that needs to happen. And that's both on the American soccer scene as a whole, because it's nowhere near like Germany, and I bet a majority of the players for FCK were of German origin or like Austrian, Belgian. They're like from those countries where it's like in their grain in their culture. Yeah, no, nah. that would have to be uh, way more of a deep dive than what I know. Um, I don't know anything about them. Um, we got some highlights here um, to show you. I'm trying to squint and, and see through everything. Oh, and it was an absolute downpour. So, oh yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, so, pouring. Like I said, I I I follow. I did research on the league. I don't like international friendlies are cool and stuff. And I believe they're a good money maker type thing, but. I don't view them as a as a way you need to judge any team ever. Yeah. Cause like in my opinion, if I was Lou City in this case, I'm honestly I would have maybe even rested my starters. I would have just like gone, All right, Academy, 
Come up here. The U23 team, come on in. Y'all y'all are playing today. But Man. I think that's kind of what happened. Like, they've had so many injuries through McCabe and um, – can't even think of the other guy's name. It just dr- dropped off my head. Um, but they've had so many injuries this year. I, I agree. I think they, they needed to take a little bit of a break. But I still would have liked to have seen them get a result. Oh, it's awesome. It's stuff you can – push and stuff but i also think in general international friendlies are weird friendlies in general are weird Back. like <laughs> in my opinion i don't understand why the u.s women's played wales yesterday i think like, it was just i like get it nice i get it off thing i get it as a, as a thing but it just worries me that it's, it was like just under two weeks till their first game in the world cup like what happens if someone gets hurt type thing Oh, there was a uh, there was someone I can't remember her name. Um, uh, in the first half, took studs uh in and kind of rolled her ankle a little bit. I believe she played through the rest of the first half and into the second half, so it didn't seem to be too much of an issue. But um, yeah, like I agree, I agree with you. What you're saying there? So yeah, you it's a you could do warm up type thing, but like Wales, they're good. They're the ninth best team. Are they in the World Cup? Yeah, they made it. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. The women the women's World Cup is like women there's some teams that are similar when it comes to the men's side, but there's other teams that are just like like Vietnam qualified for the first time. Which was crazy. V- Vietnam has never qualified. Zimbabwe is in there. I know that. Mm-hmm. Like there's Haiti. some hate yeah, Haiti. Like when was the last time we saw like a Caribbean team come from the men's side? Uh, I was incorrect. Uh, Wales did not make the the World Cup. Yeah, so like it's just so. It all so way did. <laughs> yeah, the Philippines. Well, Norway. Oh, Philippines are Philippines are weird. That, that and that's the weird thing, in my opinion, to the women's World Cup to the men's, is it doesn't seem like there's the European bias in terms mm-hmm. of teams. Agreed. Like there was four Asian countries, four. North American countries. I forget how many African countries qualify, but there's like 14 out of the 32 or whatever slots go to Europe. And I'm like, I get that Europe has the best, you could argue the best nation teams, but in my opinion, it should be evenly split. Maybe Oceania conference or whatever. I don't know exactly how that works. Yeah, they have get, key, right? yeah, they don't get as much, but it should be like, it should it should be even. There's like, sorry, Denmark or Switzerland or whatever. If you're not a top eight team out of Europe, you're not into the World Cup. Just run. It sucks that you play on a more competitive continent. Agreed. Um, there we go. There's the the qualifying teams for yeah, like Papua New Guinea is in this, and <laughs> Indonesia. I'm not. This is no like genuinely no diss. Berea had a gr- great women's soccer player. She was our captain. Her name was Stacy, who played, who was from Papua New Guinea. I don't think she's on this squad. Legit. But, you know, no disrespect to any country in general, but some of these countries you've never seen in the Men's World Cup. So it's just hard Maybe for me. Ever. Yeah. It's hard for me to judge certain stuff. And it's because there's only been, like, very few dominant teams. Like, everyone's picking the Lionesses to win outside of the U.S., but they've never gone that deep in a tournament before. I think I I did a bracket today for um, for the World, the Women's World Cup, and I think I had USA and Brazil, actually, in the, in the final again. But China is really good, right? China is they really good. good. Yeah, like Japan, China, South Korea, they've all been good in the Women's World Cup type thing. Like Japan beat us in 2011. They did. They beat the U.S. type thing. But it's just the Women's World Cup is hard for me to judge because the U.S. is so dominant. So I'm just like, who are the others? Because Germany has been in there. Sweden's been in there. I know Norway is in there and that type of stuff. It's like I feel like it has the most fluctuation. In Absolutely. the thing, and I don't know if that's marketing on 
marketing in America because American has top teams. Like there's a few players I can, I or not top, top players, top players mm-hmm. on top teams. And okay. America and the NDA, you could argue the NWSL is like the best global league. I because think considered the best in the globe. Because I do like the women's super league. Is that what it's called in England? Is, um, is big, but I also know it's mainly made up of UK or British Isle players. It's not like Louisville, Louisville City that has, uh, they have a China girl plays for China. They got a girl, they got multiple Americans type thing. It's not as like global as the NWSL is. Speaking of Louisville, we'll pull it back to, to finishing up that section there for, for Lou City here. Uh, last three matches have gone really well. They've gotten points in their last three matches here. Last four points, going back to that match with Phoenix. Yeah, All right, one zero four, four match I'm beating on right now. Yeah, one zero over Las Vegas Lights. Zero zero draw at Pittsburgh, which was a good game to watch. A little bit sloppy with the rain, um, and there was a call, uh, a goal called off for Louisville in that game that, in my opinion, should have counted. Uh, if you look at some of the angles from the replay, there's not a good shot right down the goal line, but there's one kind of behind the goal post. It looks like that ball is clearly fully beyond the line. Uh, John, I don't know if you had a chance to see the that image or anything. It, I thought it was over over the line. Well, I don't get is what why there's not Hawkeye in like the USL Championship. I don't know how expensive. VAR. VAR, I know, is more expensive to operate than Hawkeye because Hawkeye is solely goal line technology and yeah. VAR has to be like applied to the entire stadium. Yeah, but you know, any kind of VAR would be really helpful in those kind of moments. But I agree with you, right? Like that would be really expensive. So maybe you kind of meet in the middle with some of that technology that you were talking about there. Yeah. So I don't know if, how expensive Hawkeye is to put in, but I feel like it needs to be brought in because I've seen even with Lex, there's been so many <laughs> like <laughs> debatable over the line type things. And I think what's hard with soccer is the fact that it's the entire ball has to cross the line. Yep. And so it's really like the Japan clearance in the World Cup where it was like yep. on by like a millimeter. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's all out. And I was like, that, that, that's an impossible call to make in my opinion yep. type thing. But, but go for it. I'm sorry. That Lou, Lou City has scraped out a four match unbeaten run, in my opinion. Um, I watched their most recent match where they won one oh two loud and like fully I fully watched it. Um they were the better team. They definitely they, were. They were just in my opinion, they were unlucky. They they were just they had a lot of passes, a lot of crosses into the box. There was just a lot of bad bounces, bad right to a defender type thing. They were clearly the better team. Now, does that continue? Is the question. Well, that is a, a good teaser to get people to come back on Wednesday uh, when we actually dive into Lou City's next matchup uh, just to kind of see can they keep that four game unbeaten streak alive. Uh, come back to Bluegrass Soccercast on Wednesday for more information. Um, and then just kind of doing a little, you know, Google to Google research here. Uh, Hawkeye Vision is apparently 250K, I'm assuming, per year. Uh, so, Maybe that is something that the league and their teams could look into. Maybe they get that price down a little bit. Who knows? But, John, let's jump into your favorite uh, team with Lexington Sporting Club. And the last six matches, uh, as I'm sure you are well aware, have not been kind uh, to the boys in green. Uh, oh. Zero wins, two uh, draws, and four defeats. That to have a win. They beat Chattanooga. Two games. I can't do math. Yes, they did. Uh, <laughs> but no, they went on a four game, pretty sure it was four match unbeaten run with three ties and one win in there. Then we lost to Madison. Uh, that game was a very frustrating game because we had basically, we had a man advantage because that guy got sent off with a red card for a headbutt. 
like within the 69th minute. So we had like 20 minutes of mana manage. Now the thing is with Madison, Madison's on top of the table right now. So um, we're a good team. Madison is an insanely good defensive team. Um, they're they're a counterattacking team. That's saying we just that we got dug into a hole we couldn't dig out. The Tormenta game, um, I don't. That was so much smack, Tyler. I, Tyler, that is Tyler Crane. Crane. I'm fully putting <laughs> that loss of if you want to put bad juju or anything on Tyler Crane. Um, I'll admit I've done some smack talk with Flight Crew, which is their college mm-hmm. supporter group, but that was after we tied them mm-hmm. type thing. Like, and they tried to <laughs> they tried to come at the Railbirds, and I was like, "Your guys played a great game." Like, I, I. I am very much the type where I'll defend the team as much as I can, but there's a point where you can't. Yeah, five I'll, one is not. I'll, I'll, ex- I'll accept. I'll accept the thing. The reigning champs went one one and one against an expansion side. Yeah, just P- and they're ninth in the table right now. Yeah, just saying you don't have that much to talk about, but you did smack us. I'll do yep. that. You smacked us. You destroyed us. They literally like I think four of their goals were off set pieces. Yeah. It was just like I was at the game. It was just like one of those games where it, you never feel in it. It was after that first goal, it just felt off. Like the energy felt off. There was a two hour delay after yep. playing three minutes, which I personally, in my opinion, there should be. I think that if you don't get to like five or 10 minutes into a match, you should just restart the match if you have to delay. Like we literally played three minutes in like two seconds. You know, like, and let's start off kick. this, like, set pe- uh, indirect free kick set piece mm-hmm. in the box. And I'm just like, this is stupid. You should yep. just reset the clock and done. Just, there's no, it's three minutes, genuinely. Um, that's just my two cents. I, I, I would say that for any game. I would say that if we won 5-1, I'd be like, it should have just started as a kickoff, just reset the clock. Um, um, there's no goals or cards or anything really that happened. So what would have been the, the pain in that? If there's a goal or some stuff like that happened, I can see it. I can see the argument, and there's a purest sense where you can see art. I just don't. But Tormenta was due. Like, genuinely, they were on a six-game run where they were yeah. pounding goals. They were pounding the net. It was just like, we got the brunt of it. It happens. All teams get kicked in the teeth. It happens to everybody. It's happened a lot more at the Lex, but it happens. Well, we'll make sure to come back on Wednesday where we'll see if Lexington can get off of that three-game skid um, and get back either with a draw or preferably back on the winning side of the ledger. But, John, let's stay in Lexington. Let's talk about the Lexington Sporting Club USLW side, the women's team. Um, They ended their season um, not great. Um, Three wins, uh, one draw, and six defeats. Um, however, they did win their last game at Kings Hammer, which is in uh, Cincinnati. Um, so it was nice for them to uh, to get that as a nice closure to their season. Did you have a chance to go to any of their games, John? I went to all but two games. Nice. Um, as the only supporter there, I don't want to. <laughs> That's some issues we had, we're going to address. Um, in general, with the women's, they played well. Yep. What needs to be noted is that they got put in, in my opinion, arguably one of the most competitive divisions in the thing. Because I looked across the league, there was other teams that just wiped the floor with their division. And then yep. we have Racing, yep, W side, and Indy 11, who I believe made the semifinals or championship. Last we'll year. come back to that here in just a moment. I have a note on that. But we have two two of the better sides in the league and we were a new team and I believe all but one loss came to those two like three the racing and two the Indy uh, granted we didn't full lose. schedule here but yes granted we did not lose like St. Charles did <laughs> I don't know how they were oh, literally left the because cool. apparently they only brought nine players they had that's no different. bench they didn't even have a full team. And uh, for those of you that know, Indy, Indy 11 ended the regular season smacking St. Charles 16-0. Yep. Um, I don't, and there was a USL 2 game that recently, like ended 22-0. Is it 
what Texas team? Um, but in my opinion, there is a sportsmanship line there. Yeah. Of a point where I get it, score goals, but I believe there's a sportsmanship level type thing that you got. You, just, you don't keep scoring unless they literally put it or on a ladder, put, it, put it on a plier for you. Or you make, stu- or you do stupid, you try to bicycle kick everything <laughs> type thing. Yeah. I don't watch the highlights, but that's just my. I, I do think they did kind of pour it on Indy 11 in that match. But, you know, I, when talking to a UPSL coach, you know, they're the team uh, that they coach are, are really good. And they're still in the, uh, the tournament right now as we speak for the UPSL, the national tournament. Um, you know, they talk about how when you go into those kind of matches where you know you're the better team, it is actually harder for them sometimes to perform to their level and get three, four goals and then just call it off, you know, call off the dog, stop attacking, than it is if they had just pushed uh, the full foot on the gas and beat them 18-0 to zero or we say 16-0 to zero in Indy 11's case, right? Mm-hmm. But We'll stick in the USLW and go over to the Racing Louisville second side. So this is USLW, not the NWSL side. Uh, The Racing Louisville team, as John was mentioning, was very dominant. Uh, They beat Kings Hammer. um, The two matches that I have listed here, one of them was 7-0. Another was 6-0. They beat St. Charles twice in the same weekend, once 7-0 and another time 9-0. They finished the regular season at 8, 1, and 1 with a goal differential of plus 38. That is insane for a short season like they had. Goal differential. 10 games. Plus, yeah, 10 games, plus 38 goals. And they missed the playoff. The reason that they missed the playoffs is exactly what John was mentioning earlier. They play in by far the most uh, competitive conference well one of the most Charles. competitive divisions yet it doesn't have a wild card spot yeah. i don't know how that works i think the other divisions might have more teams i don't know how maybe i don't know how the w league's confusing the, to me it didn't like, seem fair it's the same with usl2 it, it's confusing because they don't it's very confusing how the well, usl2 is even more confusing to me because those are all u23 teams so like they're not even actual semi-professional they're like a, a top tier youth academies in a lot of cases but that's a different story for a different day um so we congratulate racing louisville two ongoing eight one and one but it is sad that they weren't able to go and compete further um, hopefully those girls can get a chance to play for the main racing louisville squad as they have had multiple players as john mentioned earlier heading to different national teams for either the world cup or world cup prep um Speaking of that racing Louisville NWSL side, they've gone on quite the run recently. Uh, four wins, one draw, three loss. Uh, nope, I did that backwards again. Four wins, one loss, three draws in their last eight, including this past weekend where they won two to one over KC Current. Um, you know, they're on two games where they've gotten points back to back. You know, so I think this racing Louisville side has really uh, turned things around. I think they might make the playoffs after all. Yeah, they've pulled it out after a kind of slow start, and they've gone. They've they're back to a positive goal differential. Absolutely, um, it it's very hard for me to judge a team going into a World Cup break in general because how many? I'm not saying players would do this. But how many players might have not done a slide tackle because that could have gotten hurt? Or they right. might have eased up on something because they got hurt. And for the women's side, I fully believe it's the World Cup is still the biggest. It's the biggest event in the men's side. But yeah. like it's the gap between domestic success and world, international success is way bigger for the women than it is for the men. Like... Ronaldo doesn't have a World Cup, but he has five Champions Leagues. Yeah. Still more than Messi. It sucks he doesn't have a World Cup, but he can still sleep pretty well at night. Maybe in 26. Who knows? 
died. So 26 World <laughs> Cup is coming to the host, the main host, um, uh, in general. So I, it's not, I'm not saying they played it down or not, but racing's definitely taking advantage of whatever is being placed in front of them. Their, their attack is looking really good. Their back line's looking really good. They're playing cohesive. They had a very nice, um, sweet heartfelt story with Nadim coming back after carrying two ACLs which is insane the eight he still came back the ACL and MCL tears to me are proof that we have gone beyond what our human bodies <laughs> the fact that we can just like a player can just turn and like oh you're done for done. six months yep and well and also um, Savannah uh, DeMillo getting to go with Team USA um, I think that's another great story. Um, we should have some stuff coming out about that uh, relatively soon. So make sure you stick to our website for all of our articles. Uh, but John, I kind of quickly want to move us on here uh, to the semi-professional ranks. Uh, Puma's premier finished the season, five wins, five losses, zero draws. Uh, that was good enough to get Pumas um, into fifth place in the UPSL Kentucky Tennessee Conference playoffs. Um, they went down to Murfreesboro to play PCDA Black. Um, and unfortunately, that is where their season ended um, as PCDA Black won that matchup 1-0. to zero. Uh, They then, PCDA, then went on to play uh, Beeman United slash Tennessee Tempo, whatever name they're referred to at, at that time. They lost that match, um, sending them on to the championship match. Um BGFC ended their season with six wins, two draws, and two losses, uh, which was good enough to finish third in the Kentucky-Tennessee Conference uh, standings. Uh, But that did mean that they had a road trip to St. Louis City Academy. And after a a two-and-a-half-hour rain delay, uh, the referees literally leaving the game, uh, driving for four hours uh, up there and everything, um, BGFC uh, took a big L and lost four to one, um, ending their season. St. Louis City Academy made it all the way to the championship game against um, Beaming United Tennessee Tempo, uh, where they did fall. And Tennessee Tempo is still actually uh, in the national playoffs at this point. Uh, they're in the round of eight, I believe, at this point. So, best of luck to our neighbors down in, in Murfreesboro. Uh, John, any thoughts on uh, Pumas or BGFC as their seasons have concluded? Um, uh, BGFC just got a bad draw, really, when I came to the playoffs. They're they they're, they're a solid team. They're definitely building stuff there. That's great. Um, I'll be all honest. It's hard for me to follow <laughs> UPSL because... One, John, it's hard for me to follow it, and I'm, like, in it. Like, I am yeah. <laughs> diving into these these stories. It is hard for me to find it. I'm not like, like I said, I know business side of stuff. I'm not one to critique teams for just certain stuff. But one, uh, both Pumas and Bluegrass's websites schedule thing is way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. He needs to update that. Yeah, and it the UPSL's website is insanely hard to navigate at all to even find the correct thing. So I'll, whereas they played, you know, you played the teams in front of you. Um, Pumas obviously got a bad, they squeaked into the playoffs. They losing one nil in that sense to a team that then got beat by a team that's looking like might be a championship caliber team. Um, Good chance. Yeah. They've got a one and eight chance. Yeah. And then B- Bluegrass just got a bad draw. They literally got a bad draw. Um, he said in my screen test, uh, it's really hard to compete with teams that have the top level backing in yep. general. Uh, the league's going to get more competitive because Cincinnati's joining it now. Um, I don't know. I think, in my opinion, this might be MLS testing some working with league's waters in the sense of a, there could be pro rail like I um, love that in my opinion i think we'll get it 
either by the World Cup or after the World Cup because as much as people scream for it, it's like we're the American pyramid just got into a place, I'd say within the last five years where they could do it, genuinely could do it besides having two teams, like Orlando City 2 and all that stuff as our third division teams, which I don't think is a great thing to have when half the leagues are run by this just the B teams of of, uh, top tiered clubs so we're getting to that point I definitely feel like both definitely by 2050 there if it's not by 2050 like the MLS and people are just generally don't want it not wanting to make America competitive in a true global sense but it takes time absolutely but we can dive into stuff like that at, at a later conversation, John, because that is the end of today's episode. Hey, John, we made it. First one done. Hey, good job to us. Um, but we really want to thank you all for joining us um, on this podcast. Hope you kind of got a little more of a feeling for John. And, you know, please make sure that you, you hit him up on all the social media sites. J underscore hunt one one.